Welcome to Savage Kitchen. We're doing a tasting episode today, and I love the tasting episodes. And today we are going to be tasting Drambuie. I have never had Drambuie before. I don't know that I've even had it in a cocktail, so I'm pretty excited to uh, dive into this bottle. Uh, before I get into this, I want to say welcome and thank you to all of the new subscribers I've had over the past month. Uh, Savage Kitchen has been growing quickly and I'm very grateful and having so much fun with this and have a lot of fun things planned for fall. There's merch on the way if anybody's interested. Um, a lot of fall recipes, a lot of bourbon. I love the bourbon. Uh, so yeah, so welcome and I'm glad you're here. So let's dive in, shall we? So Drambuie is one of these spirits with a very storied past. It's one of the things that I love about the liquor industry that I'm learning. And there's a story for everything. I am a storyteller at heart. This makes my heart happy. Drambuie's story um, is very driven by war, <laughs> interestingly. So Drambuie, the, the initial appearance of Drambuie is around 1745 in Scotland. Bonnie Prince Charlie uh, was in Scotland, having been raised in Rome, spent time in France, uh, and then goes to Scotland in an attempt at an uprising so that his, his family, his clan, uh, the House of Stuart, can lay claim to the English throne. There's lots of English and Scottish history tied up in here. I'm going to link to a couple articles below uh, that I did some reading from that are fascinating. So if you enjoy this type of history, get some popcorn, have a blast, or pour yourself some Drambuie. Um, so uprising in 1745 fails sometime between 1745 and 1746. I don't remember the exact date right now. I'm sorry. It'll be in the articles I post below. Um, but as a result, the Bonnie Prince Charlie flees. He needs to get out of Scotland. He's in big trouble. And so he's fleeing through the highlands. He's staying with different families. The clans that are loyal to him are helping to hide him, which says a lot too, because the punishment for hiding the prince at this time is to be hung, drawn, and quartered. I saw Braveheart. That doesn't look like fun to me. So like more power to them for saying, I got you. So uh, as a, a token of his gratitude, to one clan in particular, the clan McKinnon, the Bonnie Prince Charlie gives them the recipe for his elixir. And so apparently Prince Charlie had a little bit of a drinking problem. Can you blame him? Um, and he had an elixir developed for him during his time in France. And so that elixir is the basis for Drambuie. Now, from what I understand, just from reading the label, aged Scotch whiskey, Heather honey, herbs, and spices. It sounds delightful, quite honestly. Um, but what's interesting is, if you think about it, his elixir was developed in France, and especially at the time in the 1700s, it's very unlikely that in France they were drinking scotch, probably drinking brandy, cognac, armagnac. Um, so it's very interesting to see how, you know, ethnologically you're traveling through different places in the world and bringing flavor profiles with you and then adding them to your local flavor profiles. There's probably a word for this. I know in music, it's called ethnomusicology. Thank you, Mim. Um, I don't know what it is in the spirits world. We'll have to find out. Okay, so that's our 1745 part. Drambui as a commercial spirit wasn't started, uh, didn't start in production until the early 1900s, around 1910. So between 1745 and 1910, this recipe was passed uh, from family member to family member in the clan McKinnon. There's, there's some conflicting reports and an interesting storied history about how it passed from one clan McKinnon to another, and then there's an innkeeper involved in the Ross family, and it's being made at this inn and sold. It's a real long story. But the next most important part is that in 1912, a woman named Georgina Davidson uh, was friends with the family that owned the recipe and the, that company was failing. They were in debt, they weren't doing well. And so the person who was actually distilling the spirit and doing the blend, she convinced their debtors to let him keep making the spirit. Then the two of them end up married and boom, it's World War I, it's 1914. 
So the world's on fire. They have this spirit and this woman is genius. And she goes to the house of Lords and starts giving them the Drambui. So then house of Lords starts distributing Drambui to their high ranking officials that are at war all over the world. Amazing. Fast forward to, I think it was 1972, 1973. Uh, Gina is the head of a multi-million dollar multinational liquor company, passes away, leaves the company to her family, completely family run. And this is the Drambui that we drink today. Also, I would like to note one of the articles I read by Whiskey Magazine that gives a great history of the spirit um, from pretty much start to finish and gets, gets into like the deep history and then explains, you know, what happened, uh, in the 20th century and they compare Gina, who was this family matriarch and really is the reason that Drambui is on the map at all. They decide to compare her to Mrs. Doubtfire because apparently the only strong female character with white hair they can think of is a man playing a woman trying to be a nanny. That's all. Yeah. Let's open this. Okay. I just love that sound. Mmm. Okay, to smell this, there's, the first whiff is ethanol. Pretty obviously, let's see, what's the, so this is 40% alcohol by volume. So pretty high, but it does, it smells sweet. It smells a little bit like orange blossoms. Hmm, it's lovely. Like it smells just lovely. Oh, I'm excited about this. Mm, and to pour, it's a little bit thick. Um, it has this beautiful honey color. Mm. Oh, it just smells so good. So I'm not entirely sure what the scent of Heather is like. I can't off the top of my head identify it. Um, but this does have, it's not just the smell of honey in this. It's not just the smell of orange blossoms. There's a, there's a little bit of spice to it that I'm smelling. And I'm not sure if, Oh, it's just lovely. All right, let's give it a taste. Oh, mm. okay. Yes, yes, please. That is so good. Mm. Hold on, hold on, I need another sip. Mm. It's just warm. It's, mm, it feels like a hug. It's really, it's sweet. There is a citrus note to it for sure. I almost feel like you can taste plums. I don't know if that's right or not, but to my palate, I feel like I almost taste plums, but it's very, the honey flavor is there. I don't know that I would instantly identify this as being scotch based. It doesn't have any of the peatiness of um, certain types of scotch. And I know scotch is, scotch is a world unto itself. You have your heavily peated scotches, you have your blended scotches. Um, but I do feel like they do all have some common characteristics and I'm not necessarily identifying those right away in this. The overwhelming flavor is this wonderful, warm, honey, a little bit spicy, a little bit fruity. Mm. Wow, that's really good. Mm. There's almost, I feel like there's a, a hint of anise, but like just a hint, not overpowering. Anise can be overpowering, I think. So take Sambuca, for example. I love Sambuca. Um, but Sambuca can be hard to incorporate with other ingredients because it is overpowering. Uh, the anise flavor is overpowering in it. This, I feel like there is just the mildest hint of it. It's not overpowering whatsoever. It might not even be anise. It's just reminiscent of anise. Um, mm, 
That is lovely. It's also, it's lovely on its own. I could see as a, as a digestif, a dessert drink, just um, sipping this by itself, neat or on ice would be really, really good. I know the most famous cocktail with this is a rusty nail. So trimbui, scotch, ice, twist a lemon if you're feeling sassy. Mm. I'm always feeling sassy. Mm. This is delicious. Mm. My fall cocktails are going to be very Drambuie heavy. Um, so that was the reason for trying the spirit. I, uh, I'm in the Northern Hemisphere. It's turning into fall right now. And so those, those flavor profiles are shifting a little bit, right? And the types of drinks that I'm looking for are shifting a little bit. So I'm going for those warming drinks and those things that you want to drink around a fire. And this absolutely fits the bill. I'm sure there's a lot of lovely um, summer concoctions you can do with this. And in fact, on Drambuie's website, they have, as soon as you go to their website, like their first carousels, a bunch of different recipes uh, that all looked really interesting and not a single one of them was a rusty nail. So there's a lot of things you can do with this spirit. Uh, and so I'm excited to sort of uh, try out my own ideas with this. This is delicious. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to have some fall cocktails, some Halloween cocktails coming up and uh, even some cocktails baked into desserts because I just can't help myself. So uh, stick around. I'll see you soon. Cheers, friends. Mm. Good God.